sorry guys welcome to all of you today we are going to study lee chatelier's principle right uh chemical equilibrium all other stuffs we have already uh, gone through we have already seen the only thing which is left is lee chatelier's principle okay so guys this topic lee chatelier's principle is the most important topic of this uh, 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 this important chapter that is chemical equilibrium okay uh mainly in je uh, you will get questions from uh, this topic only this is the like i said it's the most important topic in any exam if you see or previous year paper if you see of any exams they have asked question on to this topic lee chatelier's principle okay so without any delay let's start with lee chatelier's principle okay so first of all what is lee chatelier's principle what is lee chatelier's principle lee chatelier's principle it deals with the equilibrium state of any system okay since it is a chapter chemical equilibrium then again we'll talk about equilibrium only right so any system if it is in equilibrium right that means what suppose if i write down a reaction say a gives a gives b this is a reaction right so initially what happens at time t is equals to 0 we have only a present right so suppose the initial concentration of a is a not and there is no b so b is zero right so when the reaction is starts what happens is a starts converting into b right so this is the forward reaction conversion of a into b and as soon as b starts forming this reaction or b all also has tendency to convert back into a through this backward reaction okay so hence it is a irreversible reaction correct so the rate of forward reaction as we know rf is the rate of forward reaction decreases with time and the rate of backward reaction that is conversion of b into a increases with time right so we'll have a time or after some time what happens both rate of forward reaction is equals to the rate of backward reaction and this time we call it as t equilibrium t equilibrium means what it is a time required for equilibrium to achieve right so after t equilibrium the reaction maintains uh, this relation rf is equals to R rb that is rate of forward reaction is equals to rate of backward reaction and this state this condition is the condition of equilibrium right now the question is do we have this state always in this reaction right means if you do some changes into this after this state if you do some change over here what kind of change means of reaction condition you are changing you are increasing pressure you are decreasing pressure you are increasing temperature decreasing temperature or adding some uh, you know reactant molecule or removing some product molecule means whatever change will do here at this state right then what happens there is disturbance in the equilibrium right equilibrium will get disturbed suppose you if you increase the pressure because this equilibrium is defined at a given condition right we can say rf is equals to rb at this pressure and this temperature with this number of moles obviously we have constant number of moles because the system is the reaction is taking place in a closed system right so what we are going to discuss here that when you change the reaction condition right if you change the reaction condition do we have the same equilibrium state or no that is the question right obviously if you change the pressure change the temperature the equilibrium state will be changed right the equilibrium will get disturbed into this reaction but since the equilibrium the reaction always try to maintains its equilibrium so whatever change you make right whatever change you make the system or the reaction will change itself in such a way so that the equilibrium state will maintain again okay like if i tell you the property or equilibrium is what a and b will have constant concentration when the equilibrium is achieved the concentration of a and b 
won't change. It will be constant under a given condition, right? When the equilibrium is achieved. It does not mean that the reaction is reaction stops over there. Reaction does not stop. Reaction is going in forward and backward direction, right? But the rate of forward reaction is equals to the rate of backward reaction, right? And that is why the concentration of A and B won't change once the equilibrium is achieved, right? So, so that is the uh, you know the whole thing we have for at equilibrium state. Now, like I said, if you change the equilibrium state, then the reaction shift in such a direction, in such a way, the shifting of reaction will be in such a way so that the effect of change is minimized. Okay. So, what is the statement of Lee Chatelier principle? This kind of change, if you do at equilibrium of any reaction, this kind of discussion will discuss or will do under Lee Chatelier's principle. Correct? So, what is the statement of Lee Chatelier's principle? Whenever a system is in equilibrium state, a system is in equilibrium state, and we try to change the equilibrium or disturb the equilibrium state of a reaction, then the reaction will shift in a direction so that the effect of change is minimized. Okay. So for example, if I take the simplest one here, if you increase the concentration of A at equilibrium, so this reaction is taking place and we have equilibrium is achieved now. Now we have a system in which this A is equals to B, the reaction we have and the equilibrium is achieved. Now what we do, we add some more amount of A into it. Right? So when you add some more amount of A into this uh, reaction vessel, what happens? The concentration of A is increasing right? and hence the equilibrium disturbs. Right? So concentration of A is increasing, equilibrium gets disturbed. So reaction has tendency to maintain its equilibrium state according to Lee Chatelier's principle. Hence the reaction direction or the reaction will shift in one particular direction. Since we are adding A, so reaction will shift in such a direction or in a direction so that the concentration of A will decrease and hence the reaction will go in forward direction. Correct right? to maintain the equilibrium state again. So like this, uh, I have just taken an example. Okay, if you add B, then it will go into backward direction. If you remove B, again forward direction. If you add A, backward direction. If you remove A, again backward direction. Okay, so anything if you do, then the reaction also will change in thus in that manner only, so that the equilibrium will get established again. Correct. Right? So all these factors will study under Lee Chatelier's principle: effect of pressure, effect of temperature, effect of inert gas, effect of catalyst. There are many things that we study under this particular topic. Okay. So the first, uh, you know, the first condition we are going to discuss here that is the effect of change in concentration. Okay. This one we have already discussed. Okay. So first factor here we have effect of. effect of concentration so what happens here the first case if the concentration of reactant increases and we are talking about this particular thing at equilibrium when the concentration of reactant increases then we'll have backward shift so that so that the concentration of reactant decreases and hence the equilibrium state will maintain again right so reactant concentration is increasing so reaction will shift in such a direction so that the reactant concentration decreases right so reactant concentration my mistake just you do this change reactant concentration we are increasing so it will be in forward direction okay it will be in forward direction backward decreases and forward reaction proceeds in forward direction correct reactant concentration increases so con react so the equilibrium will shift in forward direction and the amount of product increases okay if reactant concentration decreases 
then it will be what? Backward shift. The product converts into reactant to maintain the equilibrium. If if the concentration of product increases, then what happens? You are adding B into this product. Then again we have backward shift. Okay. If the concentration of reactant, sorry, concentration of product decreases then we'll have forward set. This is a four condition or four different effects we have of um, concentration, concentration of reactant and product. Okay. Second one. What is the second factor we have? Effect of temperature. Effect of temperature. effect of temperature. Okay, this effect of temperature we define for exothermic exothermic and endothermic reaction. Exothermic or endothermic reaction. Okay, so exothermic reaction we know energy releases and delta H is less than zero. Endothermic reaction, energy gets consumed, delta H greater than zero. Okay? So to understand the effect of temperature in these two kind of reaction, we should know the relation of equilibrium constant and temperature. Okay? So the relation is log of K2 by K1 is equals to minus of delta H divided by 2.303 into R into 1 by T2 minus 1 by T1. This is the relation we have. Okay, K2 and K1 is the equilibrium constant and we know equilibrium constant depends only upon temperature. Okay, this equation we call it as Van't Hoff equation. Van't Hoff equation. Okay, now uh, one thing I would like to add over here, which is not related to this particular topic, but you you must have seen this kind of uh, you know uh, equation in chemical kinetics also. Okay, chemical kinetics, and there you have E A written over here. Instead of delta H, it is E A. So once you see this equation, and if E A is written over here, then this K one K two is not equilibrium constant, but it is rate constant okay so if it is ea then rate constant if it is del h then equilibrium constant this you must remember so here we are talking about equilibrium constant not rate constant we know as equilibrium constant increases reaction has tendency to go into forward direction more value of k more forward direction will be okay now what happens um, and one more thing you see here this k2 is the equilibrium constant at temperature t2 and K1 is the equilibrium constant at temperature T1. Okay, so if the reaction is exothermic, first of all we will discuss for exothermic reaction and effect of temperature we have we are looking at. So what happens if temperature increases or decreases? Okay, so as the first case here, as temperature increases, temperature increases. So what we can write, exothermic means, means delta H is less than zero and as temperature increases it means T2 is, it means T2 is greater than T1 which further means 1 by T2 minus 1 by T1 is less than zero. This is the relation we have, okay. And delta H is less than zero we already know for exothermic reaction. So what we see here, delta H for this condition, exothermic, it is negative. 1 by T2 minus 1 by T1 is already, 1 by T2 minus 1 by T1 is negative again. Why? Because the temperature is increasing. 
Okay. So what happens here? Log of k2 by k1 is negative, 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 positive, positive, negative, negative. It means what we can write in this that the log of k2 by k1 is less than zero, which means k2 is less than k1. K2 is less than k1. Okay, which means K2 is less than K1. So what does it mean? That in exothermic reaction, in exothermic reaction, as temperature increases, equilibrium constant decreases. And when equilibrium constant decreases, we'll have backward shift. Right? So exothermic reaction, temperature increases, backward shift. We can also write the exact opposite of it. Exothermic reaction, temperature decreases, forward shift. Okay. Similarly, we can do this for endothermic reaction. Okay. So I have explained this here that what happens in exothermic reaction. You can try this at home that what happens of the effect of temperature when the reaction is endothermic. So I'll summarize this here, for exothermic reaction what we can write, exothermic reaction, the first case as temperature increases, equilibrium constant decreases, K2 less than K1, equilibrium constant decreases means it is backward shift backward shift. In this only we can write as temperature, this is A and this is B. As temperature decreases, K2 increases, just opposite of it. And when equilibrium constant increases, it is forward shift. Okay. These two things we have discussed here. Okay. So what I want you to do is for endothermic reaction. I'll write down the final result here. I want you to try this on your own like we have discussed this one. Okay. So what is the result here? Endothermic reaction A as temperature increases then K also increases. K increases means forward shift. So here as temperature increases backward, so here it will be forward. As temperature decreases, K also decreases and this is backward shift. Backward shift. Okay. So I want you to try this thing this endothermic reaction on your own, delta H greater than 0 and delta H less than 0. Okay, I want you to try this, this one. Similarly, based on this Van of equation, you can try.